The board was created by the city charter to hear applications for variances from the zoning ordinance requirements and to hear and render decisions on interpretations of the requirements of the zoning ordinance. The board consists of five voting members. It requires four affirmative votes for approval of any variance or interpretation. All cases on the agenda will be heard in the order listed. The order of proceeding for each case shall be as follows. A, city staff will make a brief presentation outlining the application. B, the applicant shall present his case. C, persons in favor of the variance shall present their evidence. D, persons opposed to the variance shall present their evidence. E, the applicant shall be given a rebuttal period. F, the public hearing will be closed and no further testimony will be accepted. The normal procedure is that the board will discuss and take action on the application. All meetings of the board are open to the public. Anyone in the audience who thinks for that for any reason they will speak before the board tonight, please stand and take this oath. Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth in all matters pertaining to the cases before the Board of Adjustment? Say, I do, please. I do. I do. Thank you. Please be seated. Okay, I'll call the roll. <clears throat> uh, Aaron Crosley? Here. Jack Lehman? Here. Sarah Wimberly? Here. John Davies? Here. And I am Roy Brown. And I'm here. Think. So let's see. The first case uh, is case number 22-999-02, a variance to the minimum lot size requirements for the properties at 1943 South Harvard Avenue and 11116 East 20th Street. So. Uh, we will now have a presentation. Um, yeah, let me uh, go through this again. If members of the board can remember uh, at its March 17th meeting, the board considered this application for the variance, for the variance listed. However, the, uh, after the hearing, the applicants and his representative's testimony, the board voted to continue this case to the April meeting to give the applicant an opportunity to find other possible alternatives for, the app for this application that would require a lesser variance or no variance at all. At its, uh, as the April 21st meeting was canceled, this meeting was moved to the May meeting, but was continued to the June 16th meeting. Re uh, in recent communications with the applicant's representatives, there was no alternate lot designs utilizing adjoining property and the applicant's sale of the entire property fell through. As such, the board must consider this application as originally requested. And if you, the board remembers, the applicant seeks to divide this property into two lots, each containing its own dwelling unit. Uh, this is, you can do the, okay, this is the uh, location in the circle there. It's just north of, uh, excuse me, just north of uh, 23rd Street on uh, Sterling, the northeast corner of Sterling and 20th. Um, that this shows the location. As you can see, all the surrounding properties on the R12, um, and those are the streets that are surrounding it. Uh, 23rd Street is just to the south. And this is what they're seeking to do. Uh, currently, on the rear of the property, which is on the right, they wish to make that... Uh, Lot 5D, and uh, and basically it contains a garage that has a dwelling unit above it, and then uh, the western property will contain a house. Uh, that's that's lot 5C. Uh, this is the uh, uh, property, the house that's on lot 5C. You can see the applicant has spent some time and made some improvements to the house. This is a house that's uh, looking uh, to the northwest excuse me, to the northeast at the front of this house, right there on the corner. 
and this is the yard between the house and the what I call the garage house, which is the green building there on the right. And this is the garage house. As you can see, it was a garage at one time. Uh, somewhere along the line, uh, a dwelling unit was added to the top of it probably 40, 50 years ago. It's unknown. This is a house that's immediately east of the garage house, which is just to the left. And here we're looking west up 20th Street. Uh, there's the, uh, the tan house that you see there is uh, part, of, part of the area. And this is the house that's on the south side of 20th Street across the street from this house, from the site, I should say, and another house across the street to the south. And this is on the south side also. And uh, that's, I can show any of those to the board if they'd like to see anything again. We'll go back to the uh, plat here so you can see this. Uh, you can see what the situation is. Basically, <coughs> the proposed lot 5C, which is there on the left, needs a variance of 405 square feet. And the 5D, which is on the right, needs a variance of 2,795 square feet instead of the uh, 7,000 square feet required. <clears throat> Is the applicant here? Would you approach the podium, please? And please state your names and, and addresses. Um, tu dirección y la dirección. Uh, tu nombre y la dirección. My, my name is Luis Montejo. Uh, my address is 1943 Harvard, South Harvard. Thank you. Uh -huh. um, Andres Salgado, um, 824 South Queen Ridge Drive, like down the block. Thank you. A couple of blocks. Um, we have been trying to contact the guy that owns the property next door, the lot uh, 5A. He had us begging. Can you make sure you speak in the mic? He had us begging all this time. Um, at the beginning, a couple of years ago, he said, yes, I will give it to you for free if you want to. We offered him money for it. He barely replied today. Um, it's been a few months. And he texted him, called him, you know, mostly every week. And he you, never. you sure you're talking to the Yeah, he, ne he had never replied until literally today. Then he said, yes, I will sell it to you. So he's going to be able to sell us at least a big chunk of his property, I guess, the, the lot 5A, to extend it out just a little bit so we can continue the process of, you know, um, splitting the deed or splitting the land. I don't know. So it's, it's been frustrating um, trying to chase someone for just a piece of land. You know. Uh, that's what he said. Now that he's gonna actually do it, I don't really know. Uh, we want to make some paperwork so he can sign it before we offer him the cash, and then he runs away and we'll never see it again. Uh, so yeah, that's all we have. Do you want to continue this case until you've been able to fi finish some uh, negotiations with him? Um, in my case, I, I, I'm, I'm his interpreter pretty much, and I, I'm a lab tech. I, tw I work 14, 12 hours a day, and I got to take time off my own to be here. Um, I, it might not get approved today, so, um, you know, if it doesn't get approved today, we're going to have to continue the fight until he actually sell it to us, um, the land. So I don't really have an answer to to that, to be honest. I wish I can just get it done today and, you know, it gets approved and we, you know, split it up and call it done, but, you know. We're um, having a little bit of trouble understanding. Uh, oh, okay, so you said that if we want to continue. Saying, are you saying you want, you, you want us to, to make a decision tonight or you don't want to well, uh, it, uh, continue this case so that I, you can get all the facts? Well, you have to really, because we don't know what kind of a, a drawing they're going to come up with. Yeah. So it's really to deny the case and let them reapply when they've yeah. got the new plat drawing or to continue it and let them come back in two months with three months, whatever, and uh, uh, with the new drawing and then discuss it again. Do you understand? Yeah, I do. Um, so so you're, you, uh, it's 
from our point of view, not knowing exactly what we're doing, it's hard for us to prove a variance. Well, um, if the man would have actually said, yes, I'm going to sell the land to you, go ahead. He, he lives in the neighborhood, so he had the time, literally. So he could have said, yes, let's go ahead, let's go to a bank, make a document, I'm going to sell you the, the, you know, half of it. It would have been a long, long time ago, it would have been done. But barely t today, he texted us and said, yes, um, I will take the money, but we got to talk. So we still don't really know if he's going to say yes to it or not. So you have a text in writing from him saying that he will? No. Oh, or, or just, he said he called him. Just yeah, he, it, it was a phone call. It wasn't even a text. I was like, if he should have, he should have sent you a text message, something that we can show, yeah. you know, because we can prove that he actually is going to be able to sell it or not. Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Chairman, I have a question. Uh, I was here at that hearing. If you buy this land from him, will that solve your problem? That I really don't know. That would be up to. Maybe I was asked to her. I'm not sure that. Uh, I mean, selling him the property will some of the property will make his variance less significant, but I'm not sure how that how much that's going to affect the property to the north, which is the A that you see, the the property that's just above the blue block there. It may drop that property below a. a minimum size that it wouldn't require variance. So uh, it may be, I think the, the minimum you would have to do is a continue it. Um, yeah. I guess you could deny it and make them reapply. The, if we reapply, that's going to be another $2,000 that we're going to have to spend pretty much on reapplying. Well, you're, you're still going to have to have some drawing. No, yeah. Uh, your application fee is not going to be $2,000. I mean, the no. application fee, I believe, is $400, not $2,000. And it's going to be like but 400 you, and some dollars again. But your, your drawing is where, the, where, where your cost is, and you have to have that to go through this process. Yeah. 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 It, it might serve you well to just continue this so that you don't have to worry about it being denied and then... Uh, what, six months you have to reapply again? Or well, you know? at least September, that's three months. So, Porque si lo niegan hoy, tienes que esperar alrededor de tres meses para que vuelva a aplicar de nuevo y volver aquí. Pero ellos decían, dile que ellos decían que la mala comienza está muy bien terreno. I remember last time when we were here, um, the, the big discussion was that if we actually get that man to sell us that piece of land, it might get approved, like, a 90% chance of getting a, an approval. So that's why we are, you know, pretty much begging this man to sell us that property. It's it's literally begging weekly. It's... Mr. Chairman, if I may. So delaying court for you would not help you then. It, uh, it's... We were just trying to make sure as difficult as you said it was to contact this person but yeah. you had enough time since he doesn't seem to be easily found or well he, he's in the neighborhood now that he wants to sell it he barely said yes today <laughs> yeah, but so. in writing it, so we don't know tomorrow morning he's gonna have a cup of coffee and be like oh, I don't want to sell it you know or maybe he won't reply our phone calls or text messages anymore so I mean, it's, it's actually his land. We can't kill him for it. You know, we'll never get it. We'll go to jail and lose it all. Yeah, so, yeah. I, I, I don't know what else to, to do, but been dragging that for the past two months or three months. I don't remember. Yeah. So. We understand that we really need some kind of Decided that you would approve it, subject to your purchasing that? 
Well, we can't really do that because we don't know what kind of variants they're, they're seeking and whether it, how it affects the lot north of this. As much as we'd like to help you, I think our hands are tied at the U.S. Yeah, yeah, really your options are to approve it as requested, deny it, or continue it. It suggests that you ask us to continue the case and get some things together, writing, and, and, uh, and then present it again. I don't think they have to they pay more money to produce it. No. It, so you're not going to spend more money. No, it's, it's their uh, survey cost is what's going to, yeah. and survey time that, you know, the surveyors are really backed up right now, so. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So. All righty. So I guess we'll have to continue. Um. Huh? No, que le van a dar continue para la próxima. Sí. So mm -hmm. September is three months and October is four months. He's a, he's a good surveyor. I, I know other surveyors if you want to. No, we want to keep going with him, with the surveyor that you know it's, it's the, he, that, yeah. It's good. It's just yeah. Better. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's, there's a lot going on right so, now. So do you, uh, would you like us to continue the case for you? Uh, no, pretty much, because I got a feeling that if we just say, no, let's just do it today, it's just going to get denied, and then we are actually going to have to wait. So yeah, let's just continue. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Is there anyone else here that wants to speak uh, regarding this case? Sorry, I didn't have my mic on. We'll, we'll bring it up here. So, uh, is there a motion to continue this case until? Well, we have uh, potentially September 15th. October 20th would be three months and four months. So that would be October 20th. Okay. October? Okay. Do I have a motion? So moved. Okay. It's been moved and seconded that we continue this case until October 20th. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Uh, I'll uh, call the roll. Aaron Crosley? Yes. Jack Lehman? Yes. Sarah Wimberly? Yes. John Davies? Yes. And I too vote yes. So uh, case number 22-999-06 has been continued until October 20th, 2022. Next case is... Uh, Did I get the number wrong? Yeah, case was 22-999-02. I'm still catching my breath from the band concert. <laughs> okay, our next uh, case is uh, case number 22-999-06, a variance to the height restriction for a residential accessory building at 1706 South M291 Highway. So we have the lights and we'll have the movie. Popcorn. <laughs> so um, uh, the vicinity, uh, from the vicinity map here, you can see it's, this is on the west side of M291, south of um, Truman Road, just north of the uh, little road, Sunset Drive, that goes off to uh, the east there, or the west, or the east. Um, whoop, what did I just do? <laughs> so
So code section uh, 14400.01C5 uh, restricts the height of accessory buildings to the height of the principal building on the same lot or 25 feet, whichever is less. While the height of, this, of the house on this property is 16 feet 4 inches, uh, Mr. Allen seeks to uh, construct an accessory building that's 18 feet 11 inches in height, requiring a variance of 2 feet 7 inches. Uh, Mr. Allen seeks to construct a 30 by 40 foot garage on his property on M291 Highway, uh, just north of um, 23rd Street. The proposed building will set back 130 feet from the property line and 37 um, feet south of the house. It is to be a steel building uh, used to store his personal machinery and equipment and he states that the extra height is needed to install an auto lift in the garage to work on his personal vehicles. So, um, although this is depicted as, as two lots, it's actually one that had been platted together, but the maps just haven't caught up yet. And so, um, as you can see, there's some industrial property to the north. Um, or at least zone property that may actually be homes on those industrial lots. I'm sorry. What, hmm? what did you just say? I said I said there's industrial zoning to the north, although I believe there are residences on those industrial zone lots, and then or vacant, and then you have um, uh, commercially uh, zoned property to the south, but uh, most of the vicinity is is um, residential, particularly behind. Um, so you can see uh, the two uh, portions of the property here. He's got um, uh, actually a, a separate uh, driveway access um, already constructed off of 291 there for this property. And then this uh, depicts the plot plan. So you can see the house and the pool area that had the fence that we saw in, in the earlier picture. And then the accessory building to the south. Um, east is down, west is up on the, on this drawing here. And you can see the, the 130 foot setback from M291 for that accessory building there on the left. So this is looking at the house and the neighbor's house. And then this is looking at the um, adjacent um, or the south part of his, the lot um, where he can um, build his driveway off of and access to the garage. Um, this is looking from sunset, um, looking northwest um, toward the property. And then um, M2291 looking back toward 23rd Street to the south from adjacent to the property. So um, I didn't receive any phone calls about this. Um, so um, concludes the presentation. Ready to take any questions? So the, the curb cut there's two curb cuts. One is for the house, and one will be for the uh, proposed garage. That's correct. <clears throat> okay. Oh, would the applicant come forward, please? And please state your name and your address and make sure we can hear you. Jeffrey Allen, 1706. Jeffrey Allen, 1706 South 291 Highway. Okay, thank you. Do you want to explain your reasons? Well, I've got a lot of things. I've got uh, quads, razors, things like that. And I'd like to get them out from underneath my carport and from sitting outside all the time. And I'd like to have a place to fix my own machinery since uh, everything's the cost of living is bad. <laughs> you know, I can work on my own vehicles. So. I like place to store everything, 
we only have a two bedroom house with just a crawl space and our kids leave their stuff there so the place to store stuff too the elevation of your um, base of the proposed building is it higher or lower than the elevation around your house uh, or is it the same it's basically going to be the same all it is is the building is going to be two two feet seven inches higher than my house so so the the grade is about the same. It's the grade's the same, yes. Okay. Anybody have questions? Have you uh, talked to your neighbors? Do they have yes. any? Yep, my neighbor next to me, he's he's fine with it. Um, the one down the way, he don't care. He's doing all kinds of construction in his house anyway. Okay. And the people behind us are, I don't know, kind of standoffish. <laughs> They're way back there anyway, so. Okay, we have to. 300 and some odd feet away from our house. Okay. So. Um, we have to address certain uh, criteria mm -hmm. to justify granting a variance and and maybe you could answer uh, help us figure this out um, one of the comments made by staff was that that you could um, put in a, a, a lift that without having the extra building height do you want to comment on that uh. I have a diesel truck, so I want to get it up off the ground so I can walk under it. Okay, so, okay, so you're, you're, uh, what's the height of your overhead door? My, the height of one will be 10 feet and the other one will be nine feet. <clears throat> so you wouldn't be able to change the pitch of the roof any to, to get the height down? Uh, not by the way they have it laid out on the blueprints. Okay. I don't know if they can do that or not, but that's just the way they gave me the blueprints. So. Uh, <clears throat> One of the criteria is that the requested variance arises from conditions that are unique to the subject property that are not ordinarily found in the same zoning district uh, and that are not a result of the owner's intentional action. So can you think of any unique conditions that you have that <clears throat> would justify that and, and would meet the, the standards of that criteria and justify this variance? Uh, no, I didn't. I just thought two feet seven inches wouldn't have been yeah, so bad. Just, um, when you determine it's not going to be an eyesore it's going to be a brand new building yeah um, you can see my property's kept up yeah do you have uh did, did you measure the height of your house yes <clears throat> 16 feet four inches was there a, a, a chimney or anything else that was higher that you didn't measure yes they told me the chimney would, i couldn't use the chimney okay because it wasn't a part of the original structure, and I don't see why not, because it was built with the house. Well, is the chimney more than two feet higher than the house? <laughs> yeah. Okay, well. I was told you couldn't use the chimney as to go off of, so that's why I measured the peak of the house. Okay. So we're kind of getting into the weeds here, I guess, aren't we? <laughs> okay, you guys have any? All right, um, well, thank you. If anybody else want to speak in favor of the um, project or in opposition to it? Okay, do you have anything else you might want to say? Uh, no, uh, no. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Okay, we'll bring it up here. So, comments? Yeah, 
I mean, he could he could build a cupola, be part of the house, that, you know. And, and um, any got any other comments? I'm, yeah, uh, I would think that, that the chimney would be part of the house, and therefore this is a, a moot point. I mean, uh, no matter when it was built, it's before he applied here. So, uh, any other comments? I think you're right on track. So, did anybody want to make a motion? Okay, it's been <clears throat> moved and seconded that we uh, approve the, uh, the variance as presented. Uh, so uh, I'll, I'll call the... Could we have discussion on the motion, please? It seems like the city staff have something they want well, to Well, who, who made the motion here? Mr. Davies? And then who made the second? Oh, Mr. Lehman. Okay, you guys ready to vote? Okay. Aaron Crosley? Yes. Jack Lehman? Yes. Sarah Wimberly? Yes. John Davies? Yes. And I vote yes as well. So, uh, case number 22-999-06 was approved as requested. Uh, we have to sign off on the permit first. So, is was this the? Yeah. Do you know if this our issue and zoning was the only issue you had? Nothing else. Okay. Then we just I'll sign off tomorrow morning, and you can come in. Yeah. Thank you very much. Good evening. Okay. Our our next case is. Uh, Case number 22-999-07, a variance to the industrial fencing standards for 11323 East Truman Road. So, presentation. <clears throat> yes, uh, the applicant, which is Ryan Spears of Spears Car Care Center, uh, seeks a variance from the industrial fencing standards for the property at 113. 23 East Truman Road. The diagram on the, uh, the vicinity map shows the general location is immediately south of uh, Truman Road and east of uh, um, Claremont, I believe. Uh, he seeks to install a, uh, a chain link fence along his front property line, which he requires two variances, one of those being the fence material itself chain link fences are not allowed along arterial streets and the second one being that the fence cannot be in front of the building uh, I believe he seeks to install the fence at the edge of the porch more or less which is slightly in front of the building okay we'll go on here again this is industrial property that's the purple color as you see the uh, pink sort of pinkish brown across the street is office and then the red is commercial and then the yellow behind is uh, <clears throat> residential. This is the aerial of the site. Uh, you can see where the building sits. Uh, you really can't see the porch very well from this photograph, but you can see uh, the parking lot and then the islands that are out in the right away there. The fence will be basically right behind that, those islands. This is a dry, excuse me, a diagram that was in your packet that the red line shows the location of the fence that he seeks to install. <clears throat> okay, we're here on the north side of the uh, Truman Road, right across from the applicant's property. You can see the building, and uh, there on the left, lower left, you can see these steps that lead up to the porch, which goes into the front of the building. And basically, it would fence line would start up there, basically at the steps, and then go to the west 
to another fence line that's on the west side of the property. Again, this is about where the uh, fence line would go, starting here, and then it would go across behind these islands to the west. Again, you can see where it is from here, and then uh, basically connect up to or in the general location of this fence, which is, I'm not sure if this fence is on his property or the neighbor's property, but it, would on, it was on the neighbor's property. He seeks to put this fence up because he's had uh, theft and vandalism and all sorts of bad things happen to his property. <clears throat> and uh, this would complete basically an uh, enclosure for the area of the property that is uh, just um, just uh, um, next to the building. He's got fencing along the back there, so this would enclose that area and protect his uh, property and building. And if you have any other questions. Okay, I, I, uh, I have a question. Uh, so we're looking at the, the, the a chain link fence. Don't, don't you have some uh, standards that allow a chain link, fence, chain link fence if it has uh, slats in it or if it's a color? No, meter? not along an arterial. Not, no, not chain, because no, of no the chain zone. link. Ever since probably 11 or 12, something like that, when the code was amended to, uh, to for fencing, standards for industrial or commercial property. There's no fencing along arterials. I mean, I think this board has maybe granted one variance or something years ago on that, but yeah, uh, generally it's, uh, and it has to be traditional fencing materials, not aluminum panels or various other things that people put up. Now wood is acceptable and the vinyl is acceptable along with, you know, a steel, kind of wrought iron looking stuff and things like that, but chain link is not. Good. Now, had this not been along an arterial, but a collector or something like that, that's a different matter, but, you know, Truman Road is an arterial. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Will the applicant please come forward? <clears throat> How are you doing, my guys? Ryan Spears. Nice to meet you. Yep. And please give your address. Uh, my address is my business, Ryan's Car Care Center. It's at 11323 East Truman Road, Independence, Missouri. Okay. Thank you. So your time to... Uh, I want to build a fence there. We have a little problem in that neighborhood with, uh, you know, some wishy-washy people directly to the between me and Quick Trip there. Uh, I would rather not spend $10,000 on a fence, but I don't really see a way around that at this point in time. Uh, I mean, we're talking two 18-foot cantilever gate fences. I mean, I've spent over $200,000 on fixing that piece of property up since I took over in 2017. Anybody that's been around there would, you know, be easy to tell. Speak up. I've spent over $200,000 turning that property into something, you know, acceptable to community. You know, I'd rather not put a fence up, yeah. but I got to protect my customers. Okay. And we also spend probably an extra $2,000 a week in payroll, you know, working guys over time coming in and, you know, having to stay late to pull cars in. So you heard the, uh, Stuart talk about some other options. Have you explored any of these other options? Uh, I haven't explored any of the other options. You know, price-wise, I'm not sure where that fits at. I hate to have it wood in there because then they're just rolling underneath the cars, stealing whatever they want. Nobody sees anything. So that really, you know, don't really do a lot of justice if they have free reign for 12 hours a night. Uh, I mean, I don't really know what else to say about that. I mean, I know there's multiple local properties, even on Truman Road, that have chain link. I mean, Maywood has a chain link right, you know, in between their buildings. You know, that's on Truman Road. That's on Archillia Road. Uh, I don't know if it's grandfathered in, of course, but. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody have questions? Yeah. Uh, Mr. Davies, can you speak into yes, the microphone, please? You're proposing to put up a chain link fence. Yes, sir. How high? Six feet. Six feet. Yes, sir. Not too gaudy, but, you know, to keep the honest people honest. All right. 
So you you feel like it it has to be all the way around. You can't just put it on the sides and leave the front open. You feel like that's defeating the purpose. Or yeah. I mean, unfortunately, it's it's really. I mean, honestly, it's to prevent people from going out with a vehicle more than it is for people coming in. You know, that's that's the big deal. So the problem is that they're not your vehicles. That are that's correct. Yes, people. sir. And that's a very big responsibility. to have somebody's piece and of you property. Have the responsibility. Yes, for sir. <clears throat> and uh, seems to be a little bit more shenanigans going on now than there were back when this code was changed. Yes, I mean, yeah, unfortunately, yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, so we, you know, we're we have a little bit of a. A situation where we're supposed to be able to justify these. Of course. Review, have you yes, seen sir. these review criteria? Yes, 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 I have. So, I, I think this, from a staff's perspective, we're more concerned about the fence material and not so much the placement. You're, you're, it's the material that, that they're concerned about. Yeah, the, okay. the placement, although closer to the street than the building, is, is not as much an issue as the material of the fence. So just basically being chain link is what they don't like. And what we need to do is probably look into some rod iron maybe. I don't know the cost on that. I'd have to talk to the fence guy that I've put a deposit down already. Um, there is, yeah, steel, rod iron. I, I, you know, I look through the, uh, you know, you get on the internet and do fences and you come up with all sorts of things. But yeah, rod irons are really the kind of the expensive part of it. I mean, there's steel and even aluminum that's probably a little cheaper than rod iron, and it's obviously more expensive than chain link fence. So, would you consider maybe continuing in this case and coming back with some alternates that would might be? It would probably be my best option. I, I would say so because I, you know, who knows what costs are today, what, what they'll be tomorrow. Oh, Liberty Erection does a lot of business with me, so I'm sure I can talk okay, to them so guys as well. You know, a rod iron fence might not be so bad. There may be some insert panels, something you can put in there. Yes, you know? sir. Um, so, do you would like to continue the Continue case? it if you would, please. Continuance, please. Okay, all right. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else want to speak? No, invisible people, okay. All right, so. Um, do I have a motion? That would be to July 21st. July 1st? July 21st. 21st, July 21st. Mr. Chairman, I move to continue the uh, case 2299907 to July 21st. Okay, Can I have a second? I'll second it. Okay. It's been moved and seconded that we continue this case to July 21st of this year. Uh, so I'll take the roll. Aaron Crosley? Yes. Jack Lehman? Yes. Sarah Wimberly? Oh. Okay. Uh, I won't vote for her. John Davies? Yes. And I will vote yes. That still is a four votes. So it, this case has been continued. Um, and uh, good luck finding something that looks good and it doesn't, you know, break the bank. Okay. All right, thank you. Yeah, Mr. Spears, if you could get back to me in a couple of weeks on this. Yeah. We'll have to update the staff report and everything, so. Yeah. Okay. All right, thank you. Sure you, guys yeah, you, thank you might want to run it by Stuart and those guys. Oh, I've done nothing. <laughs> yes, they do a good job. Okay. Oh, they a good job. They didn't write them. They didn't write the rules. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you. He was going to no. connect to the fences that were in the back, I believe. The, the building from the building west to the west property line, basically. He's already got them on the south and the west. Okay. So, uh, as you might notice, uh, the other businesses' appointments to the board. Okay. My understanding is the uh, board, under new guidelines from the city council, the board discusses possible members and uh, makes recommendations to the south city council on potential membership to the board. As you probably know, Mr. Jones passed away, and so we have two openings on the board 
for regular members and and if let's say uh, Mr. Jones, excuse me, Mr. Davies and Mr. Brown were nominated to be full-time members, we have basically two alternate positions available. Um, we have another individual who's a, a husband of a staff employee, staff member, that is interested in being on the board. His name is, uh, well, his last name is Oster. And uh, so I, I guess th if you would want to discuss if Mr. Brown, I assume Mr. Brown and Mr. Davis do want to be on the board as full-time members, if he would want to make that recommendation, I can pass it on to the count up to the city clerk who would put it on the city council. And then, uh, if you would want to, and I'm sorry, I don't, I didn't bring their uh, affidavits with me, their application forms, as you know, you filled out. But he has some engineering background. It's uh, more like mechanical type of engineering, and not civil, anything like that. But he does have a somewhat technical technical background so that would be helpful and he's probably 35 maybe younger guy and he would be an alternate also and then we still be down one alternate but right now we essentially have five members on this board so i guess you can make a motion to you know to recommend yeah <laughs> yeah it's a little unusual to recommend to recommend Mr. Brown and Mr. Davies be appointed full-time members, and then Mr. Oster be appointed as a alternate. All right, I, I move to recommend that Mr. Davies and Mr. Brown be added as full-time members to the board. Aaron Crosley. Yes. Well, I think actually July is when that happened, so hopefully we can get all this sorted out by then, and then just elect your chairman at that time, like the normal sequence. Okay. And then do we need to also recommend the alternate? Well, I, I included that in your motion. Okay, okay. If that's okay. It was my intent, yeah. Okay. Yes, it is. We'd have, what, two cases for the July meeting? I think that's right. 